According to NETSA Standard 5, educational administrators model and facilitate understanding of social, ethical, and legal issues and responsibilities related to an evolving digital culture. Most specifically, technology-ready administrators ensure accessibility and equitable approaches to appropriate digital tools and resources to meet all learners' needs. Educators first distinguish the difference between technology accessibility and technology equity. Accessibility means the available number of technology devices and internet connections in a school or home. On the other hand, equity means that all students have equal opportunities with technology to achieve their fullest potential, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, disability, or socioeconomic status. Schools closed nationwide this past spring to prevent COVID-19 spread, meaning that more than 56 million K-12 students in the United States attended school online. During that time, more than 9 million school children faced difficulty completing online assignments, which exposed technology, accessibility, equity, and participation issues. According to the most recent data from the National Center for Education Statistics, 20% of children ages 3 through 18 from all races do not have computer access at home and 14% do not have internet access. This data shows sharp accessibility and equity differences between family demographics. However, looking at teen smartphone ownership data does not show that parity. Some 95% of teens say they own or have access to a smartphone, which represents a 22 percentage point increase from the 73 percent of teens who reported ownership in 2015. Thus, smartphone ownership is nearly universal among teens of all races, ethnicities, genders, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Teen girls own smartphones a little more frequently than boys. These smartphones with internet connections in turn fuel more frequent online activities. As smartphone access has become more prevalent, 45% of teens now report almost constantly using the internet, a figure that has nearly doubled from the 24% that were reported in the 2014-15 survey. Another 44% say they go online several times a day, meaning roughly 9 in 10 teens go online multiple times per day according to the Pew Research Center. The question then becomes, how do teens use their phones? 57% of kids report gaming as their number one use. 50% of kids regularly watch TV and or movies, and 50% of kids communicate with family and friends on their phones. However, only 18% of kids complete homework assignments on their phones, which was the least popular use. The most popular platforms among teens are YouTube and Snapchat, according to the Pew Research Center. Regarding cell phones, parents expose their children at an early age. 40% of parents let their uh, child, six years of age or younger, use a cell phone. So, when do parents allow their child to own a phone? 40% of U.S. parents let their uh, child own a phone by the age of 10, with only 4% of parents permitting their child to own a phone by four years of age. To obtain specific data for your students, you should survey their technology access to devices and the Internet at school and home. Surveying technology equity as well offers worthwhile data for the teacher. Closing the digital divide regarding technology accessibility and equity alone, however, will not transform learning. Educators must close the digital use divide or participation gap by ensuring all students, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, disability, or socioeconomic status, understand how to use technology as a tool to engage as an active user in coding, immersive, stimulations, media productions, interactions with global experts, and peer collaborations through lifelong learning, 
rather than as a passive user by simply consuming online content. This chart demonstrates the frequency of students' technology participation in schoolwork across the country, including multimedia production and data analysis, analysis employing technology. A teacher should survey their students' technology participation and consistently provide lessons to engage all students in active technology use. In summary, U.S. schools still have a lot of work to eliminate students' technology access and equity issues as well as participation gaps. Eliminating technology barriers is better for everyone because all students' lives will be enriched and society as a whole will positively advance.